who are we at, a, at our deeper nature essence? And why did you, we come to this life? We didn't come just to pay the bills. We didn't come just to um, <clears throat> fall in love, get married, and then <clears throat> divorce once or twice and have more children. Uh, we came for all of that, but also, what did we really come for? And this is a journey for us to reflect. I don't have all the answers, but I invite you to reflect with me. After many years of going on this journey myself, um, wondering what is the meaning of life and having had uh, children and and following the path of shamanism, of yoga, uh, having teachers from the Buddhist tradition, and, and just being through life with many, many beautiful masters and mentors, and always asking, wondering, why, why am I here? What did I come for? So I am going to share with you what I have discovered, what I have found, what is in my heart, and perhaps this can help you um, find where you are in your life and maybe some of the steps that you could uh, explore walking. And I invite you to open sacred space so we can start feeling rather than only thinking. So we're going to call on the directions and the medicine of each direction, the guide the spiritual guide of each direction. Where I come from, these are serpent in the south, jaguar in the west, hummingbird in the north, and eagle in the east, or condor from the Andes. And then, of course, we are standing on the earth, Pachamama, we say in Quechua, and the great spirit all around us. To the winds of the south, Hatunamaru, great serpent, can be with us and remind us to see what is that old skin, that which in our lives has become obsolete, is old, we don't need it any longer. Help us release, shed that, so we may discover who we are becoming underneath and we may remember how to walk with beauty on the earth. To the winds of the west, Jawar, O Torongo, great Jawar, help us be fierce as we journey to remember our true nature. Help us see in those places where we haven't dared to see before, in the shadows, in the dark places. Help us see deep within and far, far without. Aho. To the winds of the north, hummingbird. You who knows how to find flowers and colors and nectar, remind us how to also reconnect with our joy, our passion. Guide us in this epic journey as you do when you go from the north to the south, crossing the whole Caribbean just to find more flowers. Thank you. Aho. To the winds of the east, eagle condor, you who flies with great perspective, wing to wing tip with great spirit, help us see our lives from the great above <clears throat> and also see the details of what is important for us to remember, to remember our becoming, our most auspicious destiny. Aho. Pachamama, great mother, thank you for all the nourishment every day, <clears throat> for your waters, your fire, your stones, your rivers, your flowers, your <clears throat> beautiful nature, and everything that nourishes our body and our souls and our spirit. May we remember how to be stewards of all life and be medicine people to protect 
<clears throat> the ones that walk in four legs, many legs, the ones that swim, the ones that fly, all our relations, a whole. Great Spirit, Mother, Father, you who sits in the south, the west, the north, the east, and all directions, come be with us and embrace us so we may recover our passion and that which we have left somewhere behind long ago, so we may wake up in our lives with new vision and fresh heart and believe again in the mystery and magic of life. Aho. Thank you, everyone. And now I invite you to set an intention for this journey. So we can all light our candle and set the intention. I invite you to get your candle and we are going to set the intention for the journey. So I'll get my own candle. And I offer this candle to all of you, to all of us, to this journey, honoring the directions as we just call them, and Spirit, and Pachamama, Mother Earth, Mother Water, Mother Elements. We're going to offer a little bit of Palo Santo, sweet smoke, to invite the ones that are hungry and upset to relax and, and find their own healing. So a moment of silence offering this sacred smoke to anyone that needs it, anyone that's here and hungry and in need of healing. And I set the intention to share my wisdom with impeccability, integrity, with an open heart and may help you and may help all our relations, all life, I hope. So this is the journey to wholeness. I used to strive to be perfect, the perfect student, the perfect sportswoman, the perfect daughter, the perfect friend, the perfect wife, and that was making me so neurotic. And then I learned it was not about trying to be perfect, but it is about striving for wholeness reintegrating, as we've been saying, remembering, but integrating all aspects of who we are. In depth psychology, Carl Jung called it um, individuation, how we can become an individual that is indivisible, like it's integrated, not, not fragmented, not all over the place, but how we can recognize all aspects of ourselves, the aspects that we love and like, and the parts of us that makes us ashamed or makes us feel guilty or afraid. So he speaks about how we need to embrace our shadow and all aspects of, our, of, of what is in the darkness, that we, which we put behind so n not to see it. And <clears throat> other traditions in the East speak about awakening to our true nature, other traditions speak about <clears throat> non-duality and how we can become one with the Great Spirit, with God, with <clears throat> emptiness, whatever we want to call that source, with the great mystery. In shamanism, they speak about we came here to grow corn. I mean, the shamanic tradition from the Andes, of course, where I come from. Um, in the Peruvian Andes, they are masters as, as, at growing corn, all different colors, like white and big kernels, and then you have small kernels, and you have orange and red and purple, and they make chicha, these drinks out of this purple corn. 
I mean, it's so beautiful. And then one, one um, ear of corn can have many kernels of many different colors. It's really, they really are alchemists. So they always have these metaphors about growing corn. And yes, we did come to grow corn and, and be alchemists, like not just pay the bills, not just um, drive around to, to, to fulfill our duties and go crazy and get on the, on the hamster wheel. But we, we came here to be alchemists. But then they say, not just to grow corn of all colors, but to grow gods. So in a way, this means we came to realize who we are as infinite beings, not separated from the stars, from the cosmos. So in depth psychology, they speak about self-realization and this self with uppercase S. So like, like this higher self that it's really always striving for our um, ego to integrate for us, for our consciousness, to integrate everything that does belong to us, including our joys and our pains and sorrows. So everything that we are, from little to great, from light to dark, um, from being completely confident to being completely afraid, all of those things. So how we can embrace everything that we are, and that makes us less neurotic, psychotic, and more present, more here, more authentic. And this is what this journey is about also, to self-realize, to individuate, to grow gods, and remembering that we are one with the ocean, though we are a wave, we are an individual with its own shape and form, its own feelings. We're also the ocean. We are um, a breeze, but we are also the whole sky. So remembering everything about us. And we may choose any path to go on this uh, journey of self-discovery. What's important is that we go on a path because all paths, as long as we are curious, as long as we really pay attention to our experiences um, beyond just being obedient to ancient texts and ancient um, dogma, dharma. So what is important is that we keep our curiosity alive, that everything that we learn, we test it with our own experiences. There are many ways to, um, many paths to explore who we are. Uh, many spiritual paths, mystical paths, and you might be following one. But also there is the path of just contemplation. People that love nature, that love biology, that love life, that love for life, that, that is what keeps us curious to want to know more and more. So it doesn't matter which, which path we use or, or choose, it's what keeps us awake, aware, curious, learning about ourselves and about life in general. And as long as we do that and we're present, we're going to be learning. But the moment that we just follow the great teachings or the great ancient texts, and we just follow the great gurus and mentors, and we just follow their words, in, and it's another thing we do, and it becomes automatic, then we are going to uh, just get stagnant. So I invite you to really be curious, to explore, to, to ask questions, to be in inquiry. And, and as I give you these teachings, I will also, I'm also curious, and see how, how else can I um, explore these, these steps of the 13 moons. I have a great friend who is um, a neuro, neuroscientist, has written many books, and, and his grandfather was also a neuroscientist and his father. So it, it's really three generations of just great wisdom and, and knowledge and scientific knowledge. And, 
And one day I, I saw him like so happy and open and not worried at all like other times. And I said, what happened to you? What, what has happened lately in your life? I had, I had not seen him for a while. And he said, well, I looked through that microscope for so many years, like my father and great grandfather, until one day I came through the eye of the needle into the other side. So from looking deep, deep, deep into the brain, I came out and I saw, I saw the great space. I saw the, the planets, the cosmos. And that's where I am right now, he said to me. And he was feeling so liberated. So he chose the path of science and others choose um, spiritual paths or, but anything, stay present and be curious.